Hi all. I'd like to continue the theme of falsification. Um, here I was up against uh, a lower rated opponent early in the year, at the, towards the end of January, 30th of January this year. I lost a load of 3 points losing this game. And I wonder if you can spot my next blunder. I had become very complacent about the position because I thought that the black pieces had all been driven back virtually to the, to the first rank. This night's not looking very convincing either, this one on A6. And I catch the, you know, I thought, oh, D5 and knight E5, because the queen would be on D7, I just chased it back to the back row. And he's played F6, which is slightly annoying. But um, I wonder if you can have a look at this position and work out what would be a good move and work out what would be a bad idea. So the knight's attacked. And, um, do, you know, does it look as though Black's got many resources at his disposal? That's the question. Um, so, in, in order to, to falsify certain moves, uh, you know, but please stop the video uh, for as long as you want. I'll, I'll, I'll pause it for 20 seconds, but, you know, have, have a few minutes, you know, maybe maybe 10 minutes as an exercise, saying, you know, you've got a, still a promising position with an advantage here, in theory, but um, what do you think would be the best uh, knight move here? Um, I assume you want to move the knight back and you haven't spotted some some other brilliant concept. So I'll, I'll pause now for for 20 seconds for you to have a look at this, starting from now. You may have considered knight g4, so that's not a stereotypical uh, knight move, knight g4. It also seems to, to leave the h-pawn um, hanging. But if, if black were to take that, then there would be immediate um, punishment here. Uh, I wonder if you've spotted that in your analysis. Uh, knight takes f6, I think, is the most incisive, forking the queen and rook. So if it takes, then rook then bishop takes or rook takes just winning the exchange. Uh, so you, you, you'd be up. That's that's great if you saw all that. Now I wonder if you if you might have um, considered um, knight f3. Now this might not be as great as knight g4. Sorry, also, be before going on, knight g4 also carries with it another interesting idea that this bishop is now dented by black's f6. So strategically, you, you want to sort of break down you know, this diagonal a bit more. So knight g4 supports the idea of h6, breaking black down, undermining you know, g7, which would undermine f6. So that's great if you spotted this strategic idea as well. Con congratulations on that. Um, so if black were trying to defend... Uh, maybe you'd have even spotted that um, h6 still here is, is difficult for black. So say this position, you're still breaking down f6 here, and it gets a bit messy here. But say rook h6, rook takes, takes. Um, so knight f3, let's have a look. Um, so black's still in a sort of um, passive position and might try and play knight c8 and again you you might have this idea of h6 just trying to undermine the diagonal so congratulations on that you, you've still maintained the advantage um, now you might consider this sort of centralization move uh, seemingly attractive knight d3 um, so this is a fide 2030 and uh, so in theory not not too dangerous but um this, this is what I played in game, and it just hands black uh, the advantage, almost, almost. Well, the way I played it, definitely. Um, because after e takes, um, now you have to be very careful here. Um, if, you, if you considered this, you may have considered c takes. But then there's knight takes d5, and there's a nasty pin on your queen. So queen f3, you still might have thought this this was an okay position. 
um, knight db4 but actually I think black's almost equalizing here but still with the same strategic theme as before you can still try and enhance this bishop even in this position with e5 even though you've sacked a pawn um, you know preparing to sack yet another pawn for example and this, this might not be that good for black if he wastes time doing this um, because finally your your bishop will be given e takes f and with b bishop takes f again you're finding that way to get an advantage well you're winning the exchange with bishop h8 so that's that's interesting if you considered that but uh, i i played an even more a, a worse move actually um here um because i didn't want to allow knight takes d5 so basically i should have still played perhaps um cd and allowed knight d5 but i played e5 still trying to blast open the bishop but black really did get uh, a nice position now just taking on c4 and knight f5 and all of a sudden he's springing um to life a bit so i played queen f4 again actually with 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 a reasonable position but now there's some nasties coming in now that he's got the knight temporarily to f5 so all, all his other pieces are on the back row he manages to use the effect of that knight to play this tactical move g6 so he's temporarily supporting the knight and now introduce bishop h6 so i have to waste time moving my king um or doing something about that but uh, i thought uh hold on i don't need to do that i can still I, I can play h g6 to cover bishop h6 because you know rook h6 and g7 will be dangerous well what he did was actually take on h1 so i took on h1 and not not bishop h6 so i'm starting to really fall apart he just plays queen g6 and black has now the advantage and not only that my my position is full of weaknesses everywhere um so I've gone from a really nice position to a really horrid looking position. And what's worse, I, I make things even worse with, with Queen E4. So I allow this check. Um, and now this Knight G3 would have been really good here with the idea of um, forking Rook and Bishop, which um, he plays anyway here, which is still okay. Um, and my, my only, I think, chance was Rook g g1 that's still it's still better for black maybe um although i get i guess i could have uh no rook rook takes d3 is, is apparently crushing now for black so so anyway i i really collapsed with queen g4 because he took and just took my rook and that was it so i've been obliterated basically from a, a good looking position so i don't want this to happen to you guys so this is perhaps why falsification is sometimes important especially when the opponent seems to have really crap pieces and is all on the back row and there's no resources but if, you, if you're playing especially Fisher clock and they've got loads of time to find things find resources find tricks and they're not gonna run out of time they're gonna look at their position and find every last drop of resource in it so that's why even even in these positions uh, you know it's it's important not to be too casual i mean i had on the previous move a lovely alternative with bishop h3 which is easy to say in retrospect just just pinning that pawn uh and it would be very difficult you know for black to to even play queen e8 so i had already sort of let slip black being able to play queen e8 and f6 creating this barrier to the bishop but uh you know this this casual knight d3 really w was unfortunate because my queen and bishop were being tactically um exploited after knight d3 so perhaps this is why you know you've always got to check the opponent's resources um you know tactical resources because even you know the seemingly good looking positions can just blow up in your face um so this was one of the most painful i think for me but i'm sh I, I just maybe i've already covered this video but i just wanted to highlight from this particular position how i i really was was disappointed that I had to play, you know, C D and I just made things worse. I gave black even more squares, you know, F five, from which, you know, H six all of a sudden became significant. Um and then 
all of a sudden his queen was coming out to an aggressive g6 square because I was trying to rely on some other tactic. So it all became a bit random and just my position totally just disintegrated. So um, th this is why, this, this is what can happen. You, you can have tactical disasters in chess from seemingly good positions. So, you know, that, that, you know, in a lot of cases, you know, even with promising positions, the case for falsification would seem to be that, um, you know, if you don't want your, your opponent to, to, to crush you tactically, then um, it, it's good to check if they haven't got cunning resources and tricks up their sleeve. Please leave any comments or questions on YouTube and share your analysis if you'd like. Thanks very much.